are made on a political basis yeah. and not health. Yeah. Yeah. Economy, our health and society as we've known it. They will ruin lives for generations. Your children, your grandchildren, millions of people. By coordinating our efforts, we can ensure that our voice is heard at the heart of government and bring about real change. Please help us to keep Britain free. Most of us here have already done extensive research. We've looked at all of the science. We've paid attention to everything our government scientists said for months. Yes, there's been protests and demonstrations with other groups and organisations using loud trailers and sound systems. Unfortunately, people are using these as undermining what the Speaker's Corner is all about. If I stop, if I allow, if I allow people to use megaphones, that means if I allow anybody over there with megaphones and sound systems. Right? Unfortunately, if you want to get on your soapbox for the Atlanta, You've got to shout, right? Yeah, yes, that's it. You yeah, stay yeah. there. He'll so what's happened in the Sage documentation under coercion is they talked about the fact that it's very I wanted to understand if my family were truly in danger, if the virus was extremely deadly. And then I discovered in March that the government had actually downgraded the risk to low risk. And so then when I started seeing talk of the lockdown and various other measures being implemented, so social distancing came in, um, various other measures were being introduced, I couldn't understand why these things were happening given that they'd already decided that it wasn't as severe as, as they'd originally believed. Then I noticed that there were some scientists coming out from, I think Oxford University was one of the first ones I heard them talking about the fact that it was no longer an epidemic. So if it's not an epidemic, why are we now enforcing lockdown? Why are we now continuing to, to add to these draconian rules? So many things just stopped making sense and that got worse and worse and worse. Then, of course, Simon Dolan started the case against the government and that really gave me hope and lots of other people we immediately felt okay we're not in this on our own we're not just people sitting in our own homes doing lots of research feeling terrified that something very peculiar is happening in our government the biggest concern is of course this 9.3 billion that was handed over to the uh, Gavi vaccine alliance for a vaccine that apparently is already being tested when everyone knows and Dr Jenny Harris insisted there would absolutely be no way we'd come out of this period of lockdown and lockdown measures um, waiting for a vaccine. That's not what we're waiting for. We've just got to slow the curve. Very quickly it started to become evident that the virus itself had already peaked before we went into lockdown. Um, that's what the epidemiologist would, would be able to say. But anyone who knows or understands anything an epidemiologist has said about that can see how the, the, the big spike happened. So obviously all of the peak of infections happened prior to lockdown. Um, and then it then just came down like this. And so we're in a situation now where there isn't any evidence of a particularly dangerous virus. I knew that I needed to speak to the police. I wanted that reassurance that they were going to be on board. Um, and they are. And let's face it, the police are not wearing masks. It was wonderful to see as many people as did manage to get here. It's really wonderful and uh, cheering to see. And also, obviously, just to start talking to people and hear that they are exactly of the same mind. Uh, but they're not activists. They're not people who've ever done anything like this before. They're just deeply concerned about what we see is happening in our country. And we can't let it happen. <laughs>